Hey new agents, so I wanted to create a quick video just to talk about envelopes and best practices when you are sending emails through DocuSign. So if we start to just think of envelopes as emails, I think it might clear up any of the confusion um, that some agents have around the envelopes. So when we go into envelopes, if we've never created an envelope before, we would want to come up to the top right and choose that we want to create a new envelope. So if we think of envelopes as emails, think of the envelope name as the subject. So this might be the original listing paperwork for this specific envelope. So we're saying in this situation that we might want to send the listing documents to the seller to be able to initial and sign. So then it's asking us what documents would we like to add to this envelope. So remember that we have a document section in DocuSign, which is where all of the documents are kept. We're just deciding what documents we'd like to send right now. So again, if you think of it like an email, which documents do you want to send to the seller or the buyer or the other agent or someone else involved in the transaction right now? So I'm going to choose Room Docs, and I'm going to say that I just want to send this document and this document. I'm going to choose Add Selected. Now, if I prefer them to be in a different order, um, this is the time that I can do that. So I can take this and move this over here because they're gonna receive it in one email with all of the documents together. If I realize that I sent the incorrect document, I could also click the X. And then if I wanted to add even more documents, I could go back to Room Docs and add those. Underneath that is where we're going to decide who we want to have access to this. So we have an option here of pre-tagged roles. So it's really important that you have pre-tagged roles if you need your buyer or seller to be able to sign the documents. Now we have pre-tagged roles because in the edit details section of DocuSign, we added them as either a buyer or a seller. So we're gonna choose pre-tagged roles and then we're gonna say that we're sending this to seller number one, which is this person, and seller number two, and we're gonna go over here to select and select that person. Now, if we had buyers as well, we would add them. So we're gonna say add selected. And then you'll see DocuSign does something really neat where we've got seller number one and we've got seller number two. Right next to them, we've got a one and a one. That means that as soon as I send this, it's gonna be sent to both of them and they're gonna receive it at the same time. But if you ever have situations, sometimes we see this when you're representing both buyers and sellers, where you want the seller to sign first and then the buyer or vice versa, I could make this one number one and I could make this one number two. And then what the system would do, if it, it would send it to seller number one first and then it would not go into this person that we're saying is number two until after the first person has signed and initialed anything. And it will automatically do that. Um, over here, I see that I do have the access of needs to sign, which is correct, but if I wanted to change that, I could click on that drop down. Then under the more section, I've got where I could choose to add a code. So if I want almost like a two-step sign-in process, it allows them to do that. And then I can also send a private message just to this person right here. And then I've got the X over here, so if I um, added someone accidentally, I could choose that. Underneath that is the email subject. So we're going to name this original listing docs and then this is where if you wanted to send any sort of message you could do that. Then we're going to choose next and it's going to take me right into the documents. So this is almost my last kind of little look at the documents. Now this document that I have here is a PDF. So if I wanted to go in and drop any signatures or text or anything like that, I could do that by coming over here, taking signature, dropping it over here, and then maybe I need seller number one to sign as well as seller number two. We see that I've got the first seller, Sydney Seymour, up here. That's a drop-down menu. So if I need the second seller to sign, I would click on that and then take a signature and drop it over here. So that's an easy way that you can mark up a PDF and then everything else that you can choose is over here. Then I go into the next document that I have. And so we see right here that because this is um, not a PDF, this is the DocuSign form that I added. I filled everything out and then down here I added them as seller one and seller two so it knows exactly where they need to sign and then it's gonna send the date. Um, and then I would just hit send up here at the top right 
gonna take a moment just to send, and then I'll get a quick confirmation that everything has been sent, and then it drops me right back into the envelopes. So you'll see I've got this draft envelope here, maybe it's something that I don't need anymore, then I've got this one, which I just sent, which is waiting for others. Now let's say I realize, oh no, I forgot to send the seller's disclosure. We would want to send that in another envelope. So again, think of envelopes as emails. I wouldn't send an email and then go back into the email and try to stop it from sending to add something to it. I would just create a new envelope and perhaps I would name that seller's disclosure, add the seller's disclosure, go through the same actions, and then I would send them to that. So I hope that clears up um, some confusion about envelopes. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to let me know, and I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thanks again. Bye.